Left Brain Co. here. Today we're going to create the Hit and Run Bat from Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. You can find all of the files required for this project as well as some instructions and reference images on my Thingiverse page under Left Brain Co. Please be sure to follow me here and on Instagram at Left Brain Co. And be sure to check out Angel Young 13 who provided photography and inspiration for this project. Let's begin with a few reference images and then we will get on to the build. Here is a list of supplies and tools needed for the project. Anything with an asterisk next to it is optional, while double asterisks are for items that are interchangeable with others. Keep in mind you do not have to have all of the equipment I use in this video, so be creative and make use of what you have available. And as always, safety first. Let's start with the distressing and shaping of the bat. You will note here that the baseball bat I found, it's, it was a brand new one, unfinished. And the tip of the bat is actually rounded. Some of them will have like a weird concave shape or, or some odd shapes to it. Ideally, you would have a flat surface here. So what I'm doing in these next few steps is just trimming that down so I actually have the flat end of the baseball bat, just like the, the prop is in the video game. Now when using the bandsaw, be sure to only put light pressure, just enough for the piece to feed through, never force it. And do not make the mistake of crossing your arm or, or appendages in front of the blade when you're pushing. Uh, unfortunately, you can only, you only have the opportunity to make that mistake once, so be very careful there. Here I'm just using the belt sander, uh, you could use regular sandpaper, to smooth out the cuts that I made to give it a more graduated curve instead of the sharp harsh cut that you get from either a saw or bandsaw. I regrettably forgot to put my mask on here, it is best not to inhale the sawdust. In this step we are using various found objects to distress the bat. Keep in mind it is easier to add more distress than to remove it. So take caution and do a little bit at a time. You will see me revert some of this damage back out later with sanding. So again, just take your time in this step and don't go overboard because you can always go back and add more. Here you can see a useful technique for rounding the edges at the end of the bat by cupping the top with the sandpaper doubled over and simply moving it in a back and forth motion as such. In the next stage, we are going to use stain in a bit of an unorthodox manner in order to give a more distressed look to the object. You can of course get away with just one stain applied lightly. Uh, in this case I was experimenting with various ones that I happen to have on the shelf. In this case I would apply the stain with clean paper towels and once slightly wiped on I will almost immediately smooth it out with a dry paper towel and then followed by sanding so it doesn't get a chance to set in too deep. I will repeat this process several times as you will see in the next few clips. If I find some of these stained or distressed areas looking a little too strong, I like to knock back the intensity by sanding around the area, giving it a distressed yet aged look, not far removed from myself. This is of course an optional step, but I did use some red spray paint sprayed at a unreasonable distance away and a few closer up spots to add some spatter or a little bit of red hue to the bat. Note that I did sand the majority of this off after the fact and made sure to soften the edges of where the harder spray went. In this step, I'm adding 2x primer to each end of the bat, trying, sanding, and respraying over and over again to get a very smooth feel to each end. 
The idea here is when we apply the stencils of the Batman faces and the smaller details such as the mouth, it will be much easier to get them to transfer and fill in without uh, imperfections due to like either cracks or voids within the wood on the ends. Uh, you can of course use wood putty here. Uh, it would be ideal, I just didn't have any on hand, so I used primer and paint. On this part of the video, we're doing a bit of dry brushing. So the general technique is you just barely get the tips of the, the bristles wet in the red paint in this case. And then it's good to dab it onto like a um, like cloth, like a napkin, or even just on cardboard, like I've got cardboard in the background there. And then you just lightly tap the edges of those onto the wood here, which will give you that kind of blood splattery, just kind of messy look to the edges. You can still paint the center parts of the red, but then you just kind of soften the edges of all that kind of splattery dry brushing on the edge to get that effect. We're going to acquire the files for download. They will be available below in the comments, or you can simply navigate to Thingiverse and search Left Brain Co. Under the file's main image, you will see a file section. Simply go there and then click Download All. You will then have to unzip this file, and I will show you what that looks like in a moment. All right, now that we've got the file and zip, you'll notice a README, the image reference guide that includes reference images from the video game, and some additional files. Now, if you are planning on putting this into a vinyl cutting software, I highly recommend using the SVG files if possible. Uh, these are not rasterized, so they'll be much easier to use. Once you had a chance to load the graphics into your vinyl cutting software, you can use this far right one here, which is the back layer, to adjust the size and scaling that you need. So you would measure, in this case, on the baseball bat, I measured that I wanted this graphic to be about 17 inches in length on the actual bat. So what all I'm doing is I'm scaling it until I see this diamond at the bottom and the, uh, the first letter of hit and run there on the very top to go all the way to 17. The other consideration you might have is on the Batman faces. Make sure that the smallest Batman face is the right size to fit on the smaller part of the baseball bat that you have. Um, same thing with the top. You can, of course, size the face elements by themselves if you need to scale it differently than the letters for some reason. Be sure to follow for part two where we will finish building the prop and add some final stylized touches. As always, hit that like and subscribe button and do not forget to check out Angel Young 13 for epic Harley Quinn related content.